welcome back to the third and final section now we're really going to start getting into uh, building out this spreadsheet before we get into some of the mechanics um, I want to talk to you about the operating model now you've heard me talk about these are the line items in the income statement this is everything above EBITDA what an operating model really is is that it's it's a set of equations that helps you understand how a business makes money and um, you know, when I first taught this course, I had a bunch of slides explaining, you know, how an airport makes money. But, you know, the beauty of the Internet and which is why I'm working on an effort to make it affordable for all is that now with so many incredible videos, you, you know, literally, if you were to just go on on Google and type how airports make money, there are these lovely explainer videos that pop up and these videos are an excellent starting point and that's my my advice for you whenever you're looking at a new industry you start with explainer videos there's some beautiful content out there that can help you form um, some of these mental models quickly and i found one such video that i'm going to play a bit of for you uh, which is going to help you understand um, how an airport makes money um, turn flights each plane that lands at Heathrow pays the airport an average of $9,500. Of course, it varies hugely by aircraft. A 76-seat Flyby-8 isn't paying the same as a 345-seat British Airways 747, but $9,500 is the average per visit to Heathrow. That goes to pay for things like gate space, a check-in area, and the runway time itself. The airport charges a fixed amount per aircraft landing. For the small Bombardier-8, it would be $999, while for the large 747, it would be $11,600. On departure, airlines are then charged again, this time per passenger. For each passenger flying to a destination outside of Europe, the airline is charged a base of $58, but this charge is reduced if a passenger connects through Heathrow rather than originating, or if the aircraft is parked at a remote stand rather than a gate. All in all, a fully loaded 76-seat Flyby-8 flying a domestic route to Edinburgh, for example, would be charged about $2,400 for its whole visit, arrival and departure, while that British Airways 747 flying a long-haul route to New York, for example, would be charged $31,700. It's worth noting that these are the published prices. In reality, many airlines with significant number of flights at Heathrow have agreements with the airport that reduce them. Purpose of sharing that video was really to help you understand that um, you know there are a number of factors. I mean, if we were to build a full-blown financial model, a full-blown operating model for an airport, there's a whole lot of complexity we need to capture. But right now, our task, if I go back to the case study, is really to help this investor figure out whether this is even an investment worth making or not. And, and this is one of the most important parts I want to share with you about, about financial modeling. Don't get lost in the details about modeling out every specific aspect of the income statement when you're starting out. The first thing you want to do is get the model going. And so with that, the way we are going to think about the operating model of the airport um, is what's described in operating model step zero and and the view we are taking is that we want to forecast landing fees this is if you go back to the video you saw earlier this is this is you know when a heavier aircraft lands you charge it more lighter aircraft you charge it less handling fees this is um, uh the the handling of passengers and, and 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 cargo and then finally embarkation fees this is for passengers that are um, entering the airport and leaving uh, to another destination and um generally these are what are known this is these three line items form what is known as core airport revenues and interestingly for most airports uh, the score revenue is actually no more than 20% of their total because most of the revenue comes from non-core and, and that is retail. But we have not, we're not going to get into forecasting retail now because again, the purpose of this exercise is not to help you build the most comprehensive uh, operating model uh, for an airport. It's to help you a, understand what an operating model is it's to help you answer basic questions that you know how do I think about price drivers how do I think about volume drivers that's really what revenue is it's you multiply price by volume and you get revenue 
and when you keep breaking down uh, these drivers you are able to uh, turn uh, uh, the key metrics into into smaller digestible chunks um, I'm going to uh, take a moment and and uh, you know offer you a completely different example, which is which which is probably a more I would say new age uh, worthy example, right? Like you know, everyone's most of you must be familiar with Uber or a ride sharing company. Uh, you know, if you wanted to uh, create an operating model for Uber, how would you do it? Uber's publicly listed, so what I would do is I would just search for Uber S1 filing. This is the name of a filing that uh, my and that's the S1. And if I search operating model, ah, lovely. That's where we were trying to get to. This is Uber's operating model. It's showing you core platform gross bookings and a description for it will be given. This is probably the total revenue that these guys do. And then, you know, the clearly like uber keeps a certain percentage most of the percentage is kept with the drivers and so you know you've you've got uh, you've got your key metrics right there uh, which is you know um uh, your your gross bookings and if you were to um uh, uh, go break down uh, or, or or keep searching for what each individual line item means you know um, you'll start forming uh, more bite-sized assumptions on okay if I want to forecast how core platform gross bookings are increasing you know I need to take a certain assumption on how much am I spending on marketing and how many drivers am I recruiting and how many customers are signing up to to my service um, which which gets uber to their core platform revenue and and I'm not going to go down into uh, breaking down the entire operating model but Again, purpose of showing you this Uber uh, operating model and earlier the airport operating model is that the operating model is really just asking questions around, you know, how does a service make money? So this graph in front of you is showing you how Uber makes money, how Uber generates $900 million uh, by processing transactions worth $50 billion. And that's, that's what they're calling their core platform contribution margin. Um, and you know it's part of the reason why I mean ride sharing is a challenging business but I don't want to get too deep into the economics of ride sharing in this in this course what we want to do now is come back to our very basic airport where um, I've already pre-designed some of this stuff for you because I want you to now get into um, you know the exercise of actually typing out the st this financial model and, and start constructing it with me um, but just before we get in just I want to walk you through what each cell is saying so the way I've designed it is um, and again there's nothing special about this design generally when you are building an operating model you will you know do some uh, testing on a blank sheet and then eventually you'll figure out you know how you want to um, uh, consolidate something it's like a bit of like you know when you do brainstorming and then eventually you start taking that brainstorming and you put it in a neat document um, I've skipped out some of the brainstorming steps here for you and I've just put a document in front of you so let me walk you through what what some of these line items are saying so in my imaginary airport I've got four types of aircraft there's a 737 an A320 a 310 and a 747 and these have a different number of seats and I'm taking this assumption that you know some of them will have a LF stands for load factor some of them will have a load factor that will increase load factor is occupancy rate some will have a load factor that will decrease I've taken that based on some guidance that I got and MTOW is maximum or mean takeoff weight just to account the fact that 747 is a heavier aircraft so when that arrives I'll be charging more and a 737 is a lighter aircraft and then um, I've got some inflation assumptions on my prices uh, in cell L or rather in column L and these are now some assumptions that we are going to use to uh, prepare some of our pricing forecasts which will eventually allow us to build our income statement forecast now let's get into building out this financial model and really using the keyboard okay so 
keyboard only resist the temptation to use the mouse no matter what happens do not do not get tempted to use your trackpad or your mouse try to use the keyboard it will make a huge difference in 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 your relationship with financial modeling so we're on cell i21 and what we want to do with these landing fees is that we want to grow it by uh seven percent every year for the next four years and we want to do this by uh without using the mouse so how do we do that we press the equals to sign then you press the left arrow key and you can see that the cell to the left has been activated now if you are on a keyboard press shift and the number eight for the multiplication sign if you're on a regular size keyboard press the multiplication sign Again, shift and open bracket, one plus the right arrow key to find the cell uh, which is in escalating the landing fees per ton, which is here at 7%. And now here you have an important choice to make. The way you want to write this formula is that when you copy this formula to the right, you want cell H21 to keep moving, but you want cell L10 to not move. This is a very important concept in financial modeling or just in using Excel and it's called anchoring. Anchoring is deciding where in your formula will you put the dollar sign. Now, we have this item called L11. We can either put the dollar before the L or the dollar before the 11. If we put the dollar before the L, the column will not move. And that is what we want. If we put the dollar before the 11, then the column will move and we don't want that. So here's what I want you to do at this stage. Press F4 and you're going to see that there's a dollar behind both uh, the letter L and uh, uh, the number 11. But press F4 again and uh, you'll see that the dollar is getting toggled press f4 another time and now you've got the dollar at the right point and at this point you do close bracket and hit enter this now allows you to copy this formula to the right now the lazy way that you're probably used to is that you do something like this we don't want to do that anymore some of you probably do copy of this formula and paste it. That's also okay, but it's still more keystrokes. What I want you to do instead is hold the shift key, select the boxes that you want populated and press control R. Control R is going to copy formulas to the right. Now, just to really drive home the point around anchoring, if I had put in the dollar before the number 11 and I had copied it to the right, you'll see that the this uh, column would have moved and that's not something that I want. Now, um, you may be wondering that, oh, you have this nice RS or rupees formatting over here, but you don't have it over here. Is there a way that we can get that formatting? The answer is yes. And the way I would do it is I would copy this for number format, come to cell I21, hit Alt E S for base specials, paste formats. And now my this uh, I've gone to uh, a blue color, uh, but I want to go to a black color because it's a calculation. So now I will hit Alt F C, sorry, Alt H F C uh, and uh, choose the black color. Uh, and then copy this to the right. All of this was done without using uh, uh, the mouse. And there are some really useful macros like uh, Training the Street has this lovely macro called the TTS macro that allows you to do a bunch of things, but I'm going to follow this entire course without using any of the macros. Okay, so um, now let's uh, let's continue. Let's do handling charges per ton, which is, or handling charges per aircraft traffic movement. So for every aircraft traffic movement, this airport is charging 60,000 rupees. Let's now um, uh, forecast that same thing. Um, equals to previous number multiplied by one plus this 9% F4, 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 and, and copy to the right. Now the good thing about this anchoring is if I were to also just 
uh, select all of this and call and and select the bottom row and press Control D. The formula underneath will also get copied, and that's why anchoring is so magical. Because um, I mean, literally by writing just one uh, uh, one formula, you can. Um, you know fill out the the remaining and then you know let's say if you don't want uh the the rupee um, getting factored in here um you know you could uh, potentially well let's say you could do alt h and you know let's do k which is uh, uh, and then again alt h and uh, 9 to reduce and then alt h and 9 and uh, you know um, that's one way of um, uh, changing the formatting. Uh, the other way of changing the formatting, obviously, is if you've done this, um, you know, select the the portions that you want where you want the formatting change. Uh, if you press Control One, this will take you to the the formatting window. And if you now press Tab a couple of times, it'll take you to this point where um, where you know this RS is included and if you just remove this RS um, that RS is going to get removed from the formatting and all of this was done using the keyboard um, don't feel overwhelmed if this keyboard stuff is seeming new we'll we'll keep uh, we'll keep doing a whole bunch of practicing that I promise so um, moving on to um, the next step we now we want to forecast load factor and you know here I've given you an assumption in, in column G that load factor for 737s will keep increasing, A310s will remain constant and 747s. But really I'm doing this because I want you to practice this cell anchoring exercise a bit more. So let's do some cell anchoring exercise. In where in cell I27, we want to write one formula and make sure that it can go right and go down and all of it should work. So the previous cell plus the load factor assumption and we want to make sure that it's the column that is fixed because when we copy right we don't want column G to move and here you can see that um, this color is blue so we want to turn it black so what we do to do that we'd hit the alt key H F C and and that and we now want to reduce these decimal points so i mean one way would be to go down the alt h route the other one would be to just press control one and you can see that this is in percentages if you press tab twice you can just reduce the number of decimal places by pressing zero and voila your decimal places have been removed now that you've anchored this correctly and you select this box that that's you see in front of you just two keystrokes control r and control d are going to populate all of these all of these cells um, and uh, the anchoring will ensure that the formulas are getting uh, forecasted uh, projected correctly now finally let's get down to passenger forecast um, the passengers are going to be a function of uh, the number of seats multiplied by the number of movements multiplied by the load factor or the occupancy rate and so let's write that formula we want to do the number of seats multiplied by the number of aircraft traffic movements multiplied by uh, now here <coughs> this is where um, you know your exercise um, uh it it starts this is where i want you to ask yourself before i give you the answer in this formula f10 i27 um where would you put the dollar sign where would you put the dollar sign you would put the dollar sign before F because you want to hold that column constant but you want to make sure that when you copy down cell F10 moves and so when you do this correctly here is how it's going to look I will encourage you to put the dollar sign somewhere else or put the dollar sign wherever it made sense to you and then go left and right and you'll see that you know this thing doesn't populate as well as you thought um, 
finally just for the operating costs um the what we um what i just recommend doing uh for the operating cost rates is just taking an average and the way you would do that is just to type equals to average open square bracket the left key and select all of this and uh close bracket and um copy right copy down and this will take a moving average and then i think that's okay um <clears throat> so as you can see we've just finished populating this this operating model step zero and we've got a lot of the building blocks needed now uh, to write out our income statement i'm going to take a moment and i'm going to save this file and i'm going to call it i'm going to call it uh, um, financial modeling module one step one and i'll keep saving these files as we go along so that if you ever get lost you've got another version that you can download and then you can start from there